Welcome back. Today, the Trump administration set to release a new rule that would extend the amount of time migrant families would be detained. So what does this mean for our already overcrowded facilities? Here with reaction is president of the National Border Patrol Council, Brandon Judd. Thank you for being here. You were on uh, late night with Shannon last night, so we appreciate you waking up this morning. Let's take a look at this breakdown of the Flores Settlement Agreement. And this requires minors to be held in facilities, must meet certain standards. It prevents children from being held longer than 20 days, mandates the government favor a release to parents, guardians, of course. That's a couple of those things there to note. So with what we're expecting to hear today, how do you think this is going to change? Is this going to be the answer? Yes. The main driver that fuels illegal immigration into the United States is the catch and release program or being released um, once you violate our laws to disappear into the shadows of society. There are a, a couple facts that are that nobody can dispute. And one of those facts is that the vast majority of these individuals, once they're released into the United States, never show up to their court appearances. And and then we, we can't deport them at at a later date. And so as long as we can hold these individuals pending their asylum claims or their deportation proceedings, um, illegal immigration will go down to next to none. All we have to do is look back in March of 2017 when we hit 45-year lows. The reason why we hit those 45-year lows is everybody thought that they would be held um, in detention facilities pending their proceedings. But because we didn't hold those people, um, illegal immigration skyrocketed. So this would effectively end the catch and release, and that would drive illegal immigration back down to, to lows that we've never seen before. How are you expecting critics to attack this latest move, and what's your response? Well, the critics are going to say that, that the Flores decision is, is already ingrained in law. They're going to say that you can't change the Flores decision without a rule, um, and that's most likely what, what their lawsuit's going to be. But all you have to do is look at the immigration laws, and it gives the, the, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security vast latitude on how he or she will implement those laws or rules. And this, again, is a, a rule that allows us to hold those individuals, and it's based upon on very sound principles as long as we have detention facilities that uh, that gives these children all of the access that they need to health care food and and including um, schooling as long as we do that then I do believe that that the courts will uphold this rule we have to get to another topic but real quick on this one you don't see this being a problem with the numbers we're seeing right now of migrants crossing the border you don't see us then just running out of room in these facilities if we're holding them for longer than 20 days no, I don't. And the reason is, is because the word will get back to the, these countries immediately and the numbers will drop okay. exponentially. All we have to do is look at um, the migrant protection protocol. In three short months, uh, our apprehensions at the end of this month will be about a, a hundred thousand less than what they were in May. And so you can see the immediate effect um, that we have when we implement proper policies and this will do the same. Brandon, in the 30 seconds we have remaining, three more states and New York City as you know, join the federal lawsuit against the new Trump administration rules that would deny green cards to illegal immigrants if they rely on public assistance. There's the shot on your screen right there of the locales that are doing that. You say lawsuits like these actually help criminal cartels. Why? They do, because they're able to uh, go into countries and recruit people to come here and violate our laws. And this increases their bottom line. These are illicit businesses, but they're businesses, and they have to make a profit. And so in order to make a profit, they have to recruit people to come here to the United States. These, law these lawsuits, what it does is it sends a clear message that the United States is willing to implement policies like sanctuary city policies where people can, in fact, disappear. And that is, again, and one of those other drivers that fuels illegal immigration. All right, Brandon Judd, just a couple hours of sleep. We thank you for waking up early and joining us. Good information. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me.